Hey there, welcome back. Gonna do a little tutorial on some things we can do with type. So, got a few things I want to show you. First, let's just type something. So I'm gonna get the type tool, type word. Let's make it a little bigger. And here we go. Got this and I can't stand Myriad Pro. So I'm just gonna change it to anything but Myriad Pro. How about avant-garde bold? There we go, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got a word here. It's still type, it's not an image. I haven't like rasterized it or expanded it or created outlines as we actually call it here. I, I said everything but what it was. Create outlines. Um, so I've got this. Let's go to the effect little um, word up here on the menu. Effect menu, and then let's look down here and there's a bunch of stuff and, and there's a bunch of things you could do, but today I wanna show you the distort and transform. And let's check out free distort. And this is kind of cool. So brings out this little uh, window. And then from here, I can distort my word. So I can take these little points, move them around, and hit OK. And there it is. It looks like it's distorted. Actually, I did make this kind of big. Let me make it smaller. And you can see here that it's still type. So I could go in here and change things up still and it'll um, the effect will stay with it so it's not actually changing the actual pixels or anything it's just showing you what it looks like distorted I gotta delete that there. okay I'm gonna make it a little smaller just so we can fit other things in here so that's distort hold, sh uh, hold shift but it really doesn't matter because it's already distorted let's get a different word here uh, you know let's just type let's just type word again all right, there it is. I think we'll just duplicate word a bunch. Okay, let's go back up to the effects up here. And let's see what else we got. Okay, let's try pucker and bloat. Let's see what that does. I've got a slider here. And you can see you can easily go too far and then make something definitely not letters. But if you keep it under control here, get some weird little things going on. The spikes on the pucker. And then here we got it kind of rounding out the edges. So I'm not sure how helpful that is, but it's there. All right, let's duplicate word here. Let's take off pucker and bloat now. All right, let's type this again. And I'm gonna get smart now and duplicate it before I add my effect to it. So option here to duplicate. I've got an extra one there. And let's see, let me zoom in a bit. All right, here we go. Let's see Ruffin. So this is kind of cool. So once again, we've got sliders to affect the amount. So here's the size. Um, here we've got relative, and we've got absolute. You can see a little change there. Not that I think it matters a ton, but it's there for some reason. And then the detail. So the size and detail, let's see, size. It's gonna affect those angles and detail. It's gonna add more little wrinkles. We've also got smooth here under points. And that gives it kind of a, you can give it quite a different look. Almost looks like we can make it look like it's underwater here if we use smooth. All right. And a lot of these little I'm gonna duplicate this again. A lot of these little effects, you just gotta get in and play with. And I mean, you could go all your career and you, whatever you do in Illustrator and never, oops, I'm the wrong thing, never need this, but just to show that it's there. All right, let's check out another one here. Let's check out Transform. All right, so this is affecting the size 
I'm sorry, the uh, scale vertically and horizontally, which we can obviously do um, just by dragging the box as well. And it'll move it as well. So I almost, I've never used this before. I've just done it by hand. Um, you can also rotate it, obviously. Um, but again, if I want to rotate it, I usually just go in and rotate it. Um, you got other options here to reflect it different ways, which might be helpful. Random, interesting, okay. And then we can uh, affect the stroke and everything too. But anyways, this is, a, I think, enough, enough of a little sample of this one here. But the cool thing is it's still type. So that is the big difference here is that if it's type, we can go back and change things if we need to. I keep going to the wrong one. All right, here we go. Let's go back to, all right, tweak is kind of weird. Once again, just kind of messing with the lines. Got your same relative and absolute. And then here we have where it'll affect anchor points in control points and out control points. Now, so for me, I would just have to look at see see what it's doing to. Uh, see if it's what I would want or not want. All right, there is tweak. All right, next one. Let's go to twist. So this one, it's gonna start rotating this thing around itself here. Again, obviously we can go far and distort the text beyond recognition. Usually I would say you don't want to do that, but you get a little twist there. Select the next one here. Let's go to, okay, now look at this thing. Just a few points there and it's, almost beyond recognition. So let's see here. Okay, there we go. Just two points and it's already getting pretty crazy. Okay, now the ridges per segment, you can see this affects it a lot. So if you have zero, it just kind of chunks it up a little bit, but then as we start adding, it adds all these little spikes and edges. Which again, maybe something you might need. Let's say smooth. Let's zoom in and see. Oops, let me hit cancel and let's zoom in and see how smooth affects it because I can't tell from back there. All right, tone that down. Okay, let's take a look here. So it just rounds out those points. All right. All right, lots of little effects there under distort and transform. All right, let's move these up here out of the way. Actually, I think I'm gonna shrink them all a little bit. Hold shift so I don't mess everything up. And once again, I forgot to duplicate it first. So let me just type it again. Um, actually, I'm gonna type a different word. Let's go with our next word, which we're gonna look at some. We're gonna look at uh, this uh, under the effects, we're gonna look at stylize. Bigger. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's duplicate this first before I start messing with it. Okay, let's take a look here. So under stylize, very simply, the first one is drop shadow. So kind of cool. Now, one of the reasons I have not bothered with doing any of these in any early tutorials. I think a lot of amateur graphic designers can uh, get caught up 
with all the effects and all the things you can do and think that makes good graphic design. And it really doesn't. Um, kind of typical amateur thing is to just throw all sorts of strokes and effects and glows on something and think it looks good. Uh, that's definitely not uh, my approach or I think anybody's approach that I've ever heard that knows what they're talking about. So these are good little touches to add maybe, like a drop shadow or something. Maybe you want to separate. Maybe you want something to look a little three-dimensional. But I do want to caution about going overboard on all these things. Okay, so opacity. You can see it's making the shadow darker. Right? Or lighter here if we go less opaque. Um, offset is going to shift it. To the left or to the right. This will go up or down. Right, depending on how far you'd want it to look. And the blur. So you can make it sharper, right? And you can make it look like it's almost just duplicated. Or you can blur it have it however you want. You can also change the color. Cancel that and leave it the way it was. It looks a little bit better. Okay, let's check out this one here. I'll duplicate again. Let me just throw a couple out there. All right, let's try to feather it. And you can see here that feather it's going to feather the edges I should zoom in. Well, let's just do it like that, and then we'll zoom in a little bit. And blend it with the outside there, so make it lighter around the edges. Okay, let's check out the next one. Okay, inner glow. Oh, I should zoom in. Let me zoom in first. There we go. Let's go. Back to inner glow here. Okay, so got the opacity again, the blur. Let me make it a little less so you can see the glow. It gets a little hard to tell when it's like too high. And that has to do with the size, right? This is points. So a little better for my size of text here. There's the glow on the inside. Uh, let's see, let's center it so it's coming out of the middle or hit it on the edge so it's coming from the outside. Let's just do the middle on this one. Um, so screen, we got different kinds of modes of color. Um, starts on, we started on screen, I think, right? I, I lost track. But we can also change the color. Let me go more of the yellow here. I'm gonna pass it up. Okay, now there we go. Now uh, since I added color, I had to change the mode from the screen to normal, multiply see-through, overlay. And again, you just gotta play with them to see what they all do. Uh, I have a set few that I like to use, and rarely do I use a lot of the other ones. And I'm mostly familiar with these from my use in Photoshop. So look at that, it's the opposite. It's the uh, uh, contrasting color of a hit difference. But anyways, if I hit normalize, or normal, it'll uh, go to the yellow there. So I'll leave that the way it is there. Let's move stylize over here. I think I'm on my last stylize, so let me duplicate it again. This one and zoom in. Let's check out. Outer glow, and guess what that's gonna do? It's gonna put a glow on the outside. Okay, so the mode is screen here. And so with black, it just looks like a smudge behind it, right? Almost like a drop shadow. But if we want to change it to a different color, let me go to a pure red there and hit OK. There we go. Now we got a glow coming out from the letters. Again, way easy to overdo all this stuff, but it's there for your information. All right. Duplicate you. Let's go here. Round the corners. OK. Check that out. So I can totally mess with the font. Uh, I rarely do this. I'm a big believer in the font designers knowing what they're doing uh, and that if I wanted a rounded font, I would find a rounded font, not try and round a font on my own here. 
But I don't know, maybe you have an effect. Kind of looks like it's burned or something. Maybe you want it to look like it's aged or I don't, I don't know, you know, maybe it's on on a surface, you're trying to make it look like it's on something that's been aged and you want the corners to look roughened up or um, like they've been weathered, I guess. I don't know, maybe it has its use somewhere. There's stylized in rounded. Okay, how many more do we have here? I think we're scribble. Well, check that out. So scribble does exactly what it says it's gonna do and makes it look like it's scribbled. Okay, so if I go too far that way, it is definitely, we're losing it. So here we got too much. All right, so let me try to back this off and make it legible still. I can almost read it here. Can you, the width of the stroke here, so obviously if I go too big, you can't even see anything. Let's see. Let's see to make it curves instead of zigzags. Uh, you know, I can almost see letters there. Let's see if we can back this off a little. Oh, there we go. Almost had it. Almost looks like a T, not really. Looks like an L, looks like two Ls. But, well, that's what it does. So if you want to scribble your text, there it is. Oh, lots of things you can adjust. Again, I rarely, I've never even used this or had a need to. Uh, if I wanted to scribble letters, I would just probably scribble it myself. But, you know, these things are here and I'm sure you could find a use maybe. It's kind of just about knowing what's there in that one instance maybe where you do need something like that. Uh, you know where to go. And that'll do it for this little tutorial. I'm going to do another one here and show you some more ways we can affect type. See you on the next video.